everybody who has breath praise the Lord. Everybody with the breath should praise the Lord. And the Bible says that in everything that is within us should praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. It is something you establish in your heart. As you can see, the scriptures that we have put in place for this year, it is our year of love and increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kama unaweza kuona hizo pillars As you, if you can actually see those pillars utaona kwamba ziko 12 you see that there are 12 pillars na hiyo ni mfano na ishara and that is actually a sign wa muongezeko wako of your increase na muongezeko wa kanisa and uh, the increase of this church hiyo tunayoiona ni fupi The, the, the one that we see the shortest pillar ndio kiwango ambacho unasimama kwa sasa hivi that is where you're standing right now hallelujah hallelujah na tunavosimama pale kwenye january and as we stand in january tukiingia kwenye february and we move on to feb tayari tunaona muongezeko already we actually see there's an increase lakini hatuishii hapo but we don't end there tukifika kwenye machi tunaona muongezeko but when we reach at march we see there's another tukifika increase tukifika kwenye there. april tunaona muongezeko again april there's another increase inaendelea mpaka Disemba. And it actually goes like that up to December. Naomba iingie kwenye imani yako. I want it to enter into your faith. Lakini ingie kwenye utendaji wako. But it should actually be enter into your implementation. Kwa sababu utakaposimama Disemba. Because when where you will stand in December, utakuwa na muongezeko ambao ni wa halisi na ushuhuda ambao si wa kuchosha. You will have a real increase and a testimony which doesn't uh, uh, frustrate. Kuna shuhuda zingine zinachosha ni kama zinapoteza muda wa wasikiaji. There are other testimonies which really frustrates and waste the times of those who listens to testimonies. Yaani mtu anaanza mpaka anamaliza unajiuliza kwamba hivi amesema sema kitu gani? Ameongea nini? A person will actually testify from the beginning to the end and then you're asking yourself what did he or she say? Alafu unaona wenye 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 nani wenye nani za ibada wenye nani program za ibada ama Uh, kiongozi wa ibada anaanza kukuonesha saa na kukuonesha kwamba hebu arakisha and then you see sometimes when that person is testifying the convener will actually try and indicate that he's uh, spending too long time C- can you just finish up lakini utakavosimama na ushuhuda wenye nguvu but when you stand with a powerful testimony watu hawataona muda umeenda unavoshuhudia people will not recognize that time is going as you are testifying maana utakuwa ni ushuhuda unaojenga hata imani ya wanaokusikia because it will actually be a testimony which will edify and build up the faith of those who are listening je unajua kwamba mwaka 2016 Mungu ana uwezo wa kubadilisha maisha yako you, na kukufanyia yale ambao haukuweza kukutana nao maisha yako yote. Do you know that in the year 2016 God can actually do something in your life which you have never ever done in your entire life? Unaweza ulikuwa na mipango mingi lakini mara unajaribu unafaili mara unajaribu unafaili lakini kuna siku utasema mwaka 2016 yaliyokuwa yamenishinda yalishindikana kwa mwaka mmoja. You might have many plans and maybe you tried this one and that failed you tried another plan and then it failed but it might be the time that you'll actually like stand and say that in the year 2016 those things that I failed in the past were they they actually happened in this year Katika malengo ya maisha yako katika malengo ya familia yako Mungu ana uwezo wa kufanya hayo In the plans of your life and in the plans of your family God is able to do those great things Na hata kwa ajili ya kanisa And even for the church. Hilo ndilo kusudi la Mungu. That is God's purpose. Ni mwaka wetu wa kuongezeka. This is our year of increase. Na hiyo tukitumia akili hatutaona jinsi itakavyotokea. And if we will actually use our mind we won't actually see when it happens. Tutakavyoona yaliyo tuzingira tutaona ni ngumu sana. Because when we see the things that surrounds us we'll actually find ourselves in a very Lakini difficult kwa situation. Ya rohoni, But if you see it in the spiritual eyes. Tunaona yakitokea. We will actually see those things happening. Maana Mungu wetu sio muongo. Because our God doesn't lie. Akisema anafanya. When he says we'll actually accomplish it. yake inawezi kachelewa. His promise might delay. Lakini kwa wakati wa Bwana yeye anatenda. But in God's appointed time he will fulfill it. Ambia mwenzako hii ni wakati ya Bwana. Tell you never this is the Lord's time. Yen hachelewi. 
he will never delay haji kabla ya jambo he doesn't actually come before the event wala hachelewi he doesn't actually come late kwa wakati wake anafanya he comes and he does things at his appointed time yeye unaweza kusema amina can you say amen to that unabii mwingi umepita kushoto na kulia many prophecies have gone by left and right inawezekana umetarajia possibly you were expectant lakini unabii wa mwaka huu ni wako wako but this year's prophecy is yours sema amina say amen sema amina say amen lakini katika hayo but in all this kuna kitu kitatokea there's something which will happen bwana amesema katika mwanzo nane the lord said in genesis chapter 8 huko ameongea na nuhu god spoke to noah toka katika safina hii come out of the ark toka katika safina hii come out of the ark nami nitakubariki and i will bless you na uzae na uongezeke be fruitful and multiply bwana asifiwe praise the lord mwanzo 8:16 bwana mwenyewe kamwambia toka it's only it's god who asked noah to come out lakini mwanzo 7:16 bwana mwenyewe alimwambia huko mwanzoni ingia kwenye safina but in in genesis 1 Mwanzo 7:16 Mungu mwenyewe alimwambia ingia kwenye safina. Genesis chapter 7 verse 16 it's God who commanded Noah to enter into the ark. Na alivyoingia Bwana mwenyewe Biblia inasema Bwana mwenyewe akafunga mlango wa safina. And once Noah has entered into the ark it's the Lord himself who locked the ark. Ilikuwa ni ishara ya upendo wa Mungu. That was a, a, a sign of God's love. Ilikuwa ni ulinzi wa Bwana. It was God's protection. Maana wakati wa garika watu wote walikufa na hiyo safina ikawa ni ishara ya ulinzi wa Bwana juu yake. Because after the flood many people died but the ark stood as, as God's security, God's protection upon Noah. Lakini kwa wakati ulivyofika But in the appointed time jambo ambalo lilikuwa ni baraka kwako something which was a blessing to you jambo ambalo lilikuwa ni, ni mpango na agizo la Mungu something which was god's plan and god's instruction jambo ambalo lilikuwa ni ishara ya Mungu kwako something which was a sign of god for you tayari linaenda kuonekana kwa kikwazo it's now going to become a stumbling block maana bwana anasema toka sasa kwenye hiyo safina because now god is asking no to come out of the ark ni lazima uwe na masikio ya rohoni kujua maagizo ya bwana yanasema nini you must have spiritual ears to understand god's instructions mungu alikuhifadhi katika hali fulani you see god preserved no in a certain condition ili kukulinda so that he can protect lakini kwa muda mwingine unaofaa ambao ni huu But in the another appointed time which is this Mungu anafungua huo mlango na kusema toka kwenye hiyo safina God is now opening that door and asking you to come out of your ark Alikuwa na hali fulani ulioizoea Maybe it was a certain condition that you used ya to Ya baraka a blessing Alikuwa na hali fulani ya Mungu Maybe it was God's situation Na umeizoea tayari And you are used to that situation Umeona inakufa tayari You think maybe that situation is sufficient for you Maana katika dunia nzima hapa kukua mahali pa usalama kama hiyo safina Because in the entire world there was no safe place except in the ark Lakini Mungu But God Anakwambia sasa toka Is asking you to come out Na hiyo ni hatua ya imani and that is a step of faith utoke mahali pa usalama come out from a comfort zone mahali ambapo palikuhifadhi a place which preserved you mahali ambapo ulikuwa secured a place where you were secure haukupungukiwa na kitu you didn't lack anything lakini mungu anakwambia toka sasa but god is asking you to come out na now na toka and when you are coming out usitoke kwa mashaka Don't come out with doubts. Utoke ukijua kwamba ni Bwana amesema. Come out with full understanding that it's God who instructed you. Haja kutoa ili akuue. And he will actually take you out to kill you. Haja kutoa ili akuaibishe. He did not tell you to come out to kill you or to assume you. Haja kutoa ili akubariki. But he told you to come out so that he can bless you. He can give you an increase. Kama utaamini, if you will believe. Na utatii Bwana. And obey the Lord. Mungu anaenda kukubariki. God is going to bless you. Kwa njia ambazo ulikuwa uzijui. In ways you never expected. Na alivotoka. And when no came out. Ndipo aligundua. That's when he discovered apakuwa na hewa ya kutosha that there was no enough air in the ark apakuwa na dirisha there was no windows in the ark kumbe 
Hapakuwa na mahali pa kumtolea Mungu sadaka. There was no a place to give God an offering. Palikuwa na upungufu mwingi sana. There was a lot of deficiency in the ark. Lakini kulingana na hali ambayo ilikuwa inaelekea watu kufa huko nje, palikuwa ni pazuri sana. But compared to what was actually happening outside the ark, it was much more better to be in the ark. Kwa hiyo Mungu alikuingiza katika hali ya wokovu ili akulinde na garika, akulinde na dunia. Lakini Mungu anaenda kufikisha sasa katika hali ya wokovu wako ambao unatakiwa kutembea kwa imani na kumuona Mungu zaidi na zaidi. So God allowed you to come into salvation so that he can preserve your life from the world. But now God want to take you to another level where you'll actually experience a God's increase. Uh, for your life. Na kwa hiyo tunayoiongea sasa. And that is what we are talking about now. Lazima ugundue kwamba safina yako ni nini. You have to recognize what is your ark. Safina yako ni nini? What is your ark? Ambao unatakiwa utoke kwenye hiyo safina. The very ark that you must come out from. Huwezi kuona muongezeko ambao Bwana anauhitaji bila kutoka katika hiyo hali ya safina. You will not see God's increase if you are not coming out of the ark. Amen. Amen. Amina. Amen. Amina. Amen. Sikiliza nikwambie. Listen, let me tell you. Safina the ark. Kulingana na hali hii, according to this condition, ni mahali ambapo it's a place whereby hapakuwa pazuri sana lakini Mungu alikuhifadhi. It was not all that pleasant but yet God preserved you in that place. Unaweza ukawa umeumwa sana. Maybe you went through severe sickness. Na ukapeleka hospitali. And you admitted to a hospital. Usingeingia kwenye hospitali hiyo labda ungekufa. Maybe if if you are not taken to the hospital that sickness might have killed you. Kwa hiyo ulipoingia hospitali ilikuwa ni mahali ambapo patakusaidia. So when you went to the hospital it was a place where you will actually get the help that you needed. Umetungwa sindani. And so you were injected. Umepewa madawa. You were given some medicine. Umekutana na madaktari na manesi. You were uh, you encountered doctors and nurses. Kwa hali fulani imekusaidia. And so that has helped you. Bwana anakuambia toka kwenye hiyo hospitali. But now God is commanding you to come out of that hospital. Toka kwenye hiyo safina. Come out of that ark. Kwa maana nyingine In other words, hata kama hujajisikia vizuri ndani sana kwa afya. Even if you're not feeling all that good within. Bwana anakuambia toka God is commanding you to come out. Kwa nyingine, In other words, nimekuponya. I've healed you. Toka sasa kwenye hospitali. Come out of that hospital. Usipotoka. But if you refuse to come out, wataendelea kudunga si They will continue to inject you. Wataendelea kukupa madawa. They'll continue to give you some medicine. Na sumu ya hizo dawa na hiyo sindani vitakuua sasa. Now the poison of the medicine and the injection will kill you. Kwa hiyo ulipoenda ulikuwa katika hali ya maututi. And so you went there when you are severely sick. Na hiyo hospitali kakusaidia. And that hospital helped you. Lakini usizoe sana madawa sana. But don't get used to medicine. Toka sasa. Come out. Kutana na damu ya Yesu. Meet with the blood of Jesus. Kutana na uponyaji wa Bwana. Encounter with the Lord's healing. Na uanze ku experience maisha ya afya na afya tete. And start to experience a life full of health. Bwana Bwana anakuambia. Because the Lord is telling you. Mimi ni zaidi ya hivyo vidonge. I am more than medicine. Mimi ni zaidi ya hiyo hali uliyoizoea. I am more than what you used to. Nitakupa ku experience uponyaji kutoka ndani ya damu ya Yesu. I will enable you to experience healing through the blood of na Jesus. Na utakaa na uzima tele. And you will stay with life abundantly. Sasa unaanza kusema mm. Now you start to say mm. Kweli nitaacha hii dawa. Will I be able to live this Kweli medicine? Kweli nitaacha hii hali. Will I be able to live this Nikita condition? Wezekana. Is it possible? Lakini si ni Bwana amekwambia toka. But it's the Lord who told you come out. Hiyo ni safina ya magonjo. That is an ark of sickness. Ambao Bwana anataka kutoa ndani. Which the Lord wants you to come out of it. Sema amina kama unaamini. Say amen if you believe. Mwingine anataka aendelee tu ameze vidonge ameze vidonge ameze vidonge. Some will like to continue taking medicine more and more. Inawezekana ni mahali pa kazi. It might be it's in your workplace. Bwana anakuambia kazi hii imekubariki. And the Lord is telling you that this work Lakini has blessed sasa you. Lakini toka. But now come out. Nitakupa kazi ingine nzuri zaidi. I'll give you a better job. Unaanza kungangania unasema eh hey, Mungu wangu. 
and then you start to resist nikikosa kazi hii nitafanyeje if i'll miss this job what will i do nimezoea imenisaidia kwa hali moja au nyingine i'm used to this job and it has helped me sasa bwana anakuambia now the lord is telling you mimi nimekubariki na kazi hiyo it is me who blessed you with that job bwana sina mpango wa kukushusha chini and i don't have any plan to demote you nataka kukupa kazi ya juu zaidi i want to give you a, a, a better job utakavyokubali kutoka so when you agree and come out utakutana na Mungu wa increase you will encounter with the god of increase utakutana na Mungu anayekuzidisha you will encounter with the god who multiplies you sema amina say amen sema amina say amen sema amina say amen wengine Mungu anataka kukubadilishia kazi ya biashara others god want to change your business unasema nimezoea hii but i'm used to this business bwana nimebariki this business has helped me sasa umezoeaje Now how did you experience If God didn't give you that business how would you have known But now you start to see that the business is becoming unstable Come out from that condition God will open for you a new business which is higher You will encounter with the God of increase In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus God is the God of all with a flesh. Ni Mungu anayeweza. Is God who is able. Akitaka kukufundisha. And if he wants to teach you. Akitaka kukubariki. If he want to bless you. Atakupa maagizo. He will give you instructions. Na hayo maagizo. And those instructions. Yanaweza yakaonekana kwamba ni magumu. Might seem very difficult. Lakini ni ya baraka kwako. But those instructions are a blessing to you. And we as a church. Bwana anasema. God has said. Tumekaa sana kwenye kuta hizi. We have stayed so long in this poor world. Huu ni muda wa kutoka nje. This is time to go out. Na kuihubiri njili ya Bwana. And to preach the gospel of the Lord. Na kuihubiri njili ya Bwana. And to preach the gospel of the Lord. Na watu waokolewe. That people will be saved. Na watu wakombolewe. People will be delivered. Mtu mwingine hajawahi hata kushuhudia jirani. Some some of us have never even witnessed your neighbor. Mwingine hajawahi hata kusimama jikoani. Never stood in a platform. Anasema mimi nimezoea kufundisha. Ah uh, you say I'm used to teaching. Mimi ni mwalimu. I'm a teacher. Ni kweli ni baraka. It's true and it's a blessing. Wewe unapenda tu wakukusanyie kundi la watu. You just want people to gather a group of people. Na uwafundishe. And then you teach them. Na unasema mimi ni mwalimu. And you say I'm a teacher. Lakini kuwa mwalimu. But to be a teacher. Havimaanishi kwamba huwezi kuwa mwinjilisti. It doesn't mean that you cannot be an evangelist. Unaogopa tu kwenda jukwaani. You are just scared to stand in the platform. Kwamba nitahubirije. That Nisizoe kuhubiri injili. I don't know how to preach the gospel. Na watu wakaokoka. And people get saved. Hiyo ni hofu. That is fear. Kama unaweza kuwa mwalimu na kufundisha watu wakaelewa. If you can teach people and they understand you. Wenye dhambi hawana nguvu juu yako. Sinners have no power over you. You can preach to sinners and they can be saved. So don't be scared to be an evangelist. Unaweza kuhubiri. You can preach. Unaweza kushuhudia. You can witness. Hata kusimama jukwaani unaweza. Even standing on a platform you can. Ambia mwenzako unaweza. Tell your neighbor you can. Hallelujah. 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 Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Ni muda wa kusubutu. This is the time to dare. Tutazifanya kazi ambazo hatujawahi kuzifanya huko. We will do works which we've never done before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unasema kwamba na nitaanzaje? Then you ask yourself how Kijawai will I start? I've never preached. Labda nitahubiri watu watanicheka. Maybe I'll preach and people laugh at me. Utaongea maneno ya Mungu. You will speak the words of God. Utaeleza upendo wa Kristo. You will declare the love of Jesus. Alafu utashuhudia ya ambao Mungu alikufanyia. And then you will witness uh, what God has done in your life. Alafu utachukua hatua ya imani. And then you'll take a step of faith. Utamwambia huyu aliyenifanyia hivyo. And then you'll say the one who did those things to me. Ni Mungu wako. He is your God. Anaweza pia kukuokoa. He can also save you. Anaweza pia kukufanyia yale ambayo amenifanyia. He can also do what he did to me. Na kama unataka kumpokea Yesu. And if you want to receive Jesus. Simama kwa miguu yako. Stand on your feet. Wewe sema tu. You just say. Roho wa Bwana atashuhudia watu. The spirit of the Lord will actually come upon Na people. Na utashaka utaona watu wanasimama. And you'll be amazed that people will stand Na on their feet. Na And they will be saved. Kwa maana jinsi hivyo. If kwa maana jinsi hivyo uh, for that reason Mungu aliupenda ulimwengu God so loved the world hata kamtoa mwana wake wa pekee and he gave his only begotten son ili kila amwaminie that whosoever asipotee believe in him will not be perish wa mine. but have eternal life sio wewe unaokoa it's not you who say wewe unaongea 
You are the one who speak. Na Bwana aliyesema toka ukahubiri injili. And the Lord who said go and preach the gospel. Ataambatanisha maneno yako na ishara na maajabu. Will accompany your words with signs and wonders. Na watu wataokolewa. And people will be saved. Sema amina. Say amen. Je uko tayari kwa hilo? Are you ready for that? Uko tayari kwa hilo? Are you ready for that? Je unajua hapo nje kuna watu wanateseka sana? Do you know there are people out there who are suffering? Je unajua hapo nje kuna watu wanaumia sana? Do you know there are people out there who are hurting? Hata inawezekana mimi na wewe It is possible you and me Tumeteseka We have gone through difficulties Tumeumia We have suffered Maana tuko hapa duniani Because we are in this world Sasa kwa sababu tumeumia Now because we are hurt Kwa sababu tumekwazika Because we've been offended Kwa sababu tumekutana na hali za kutisha Because we have encountered uh, threatening situations Hata tunavohubiriwa muongezeko tunaogopa kuamini Even when we are preached about increase We are scared to believe that. You know a person who has been sick for a long time. And then you tell him about uh, healing. Then that person will actually say now this sickness. I've stayed with it for many years. Is it possible that God can heal me this year? Then you think it's something which is impossible. When you say this is the year of increase, Then you look at yourself that you sometimes sleep without eating. Unaangalia mshahara wako. You look at your salary. Unajiuliza kwamba hii mshahara itapanda kwenye January mpaka December na mna gani kiasi hicho? Then you ask yourself will this salary increase from January to December to what extent? Unapewa mshahara tarehe moja. You receive your salary on the 1st. Ama tarehe 31. Or maybe 31st of each month. Tarehe 6 unaanza kuomba mtu akusaidia kukope hela. On the 6th of the same month you start to ask someone to help you. You are hizo wiki tatu zinazofuata ni za madeni na kujiuliza kwamba itakuweje nifike mwisho wa mwezi. And the following three weeks then you actually enter into debts and you ask yourself how will I make it to the end of this month? Ni wangapi wanaelewa ninachosema? How many people understand what I'm talking about? Ni wangapi wanapitia hali kama hiyo? How many of you are going through that situation? Unapata hela tarehe sita hela imeisha. You receive money on the first but on the sixth the money is finished. Bado ujue watoto wataenda shule namna gani? You don't know how you'll pay school fees for your children. Bado ujue utalipa nyumba namna gani? You don't know how are you going to pay for your rent? Na hata chakula ya wiki tatu zinazobaki hauna. Even food for the three weeks you don't have. Sasa huyo mtu kimwambia ni mwaka wa muongezeko. Now if you tell that kind of a person that this is the year of increase. Anaona tu mama anasema tu. Uh, you'll just say mama is just saying it but mateso yangu sio ya ki, ya kuondoka kihivo. Uh, my sufferings I, I will not be able to escape like that. Majaribu yangu hawezi atakayaelewa. She can never understand my trials. Kwani hiyo hali itageuka namna gani? How will that situation turn? Miaka nenda miaka rudi ndio maisha. Year in year out. This is the life. Huo muongezeko sasa utatoka wapi? Where will that increase come from? Na mimi ninayapitia ya kwangu. Me also I'm going through my own issues. Mateso yako yako tofauti na ya kwangu. Your sufferings are different from mine. Naweza nikajiuliza kwamba nitatoka katika hali hii namna gani? I might ask myself how will I ever escape from this situation? Sasa kila mtu anaweza kajiuliza. So right now everyone can ask himself or herself. Na ndio roho wa Bwana anasema. And the spirit of the Lord is saying. Ukijiuliza mpaka mwanzo mpaka Disemba hauna jibu. If you ask yourself from January to December you will not come up with an answer. Ninge kushauri na ninge jishauri nisijiulize maana ninavyozidi kujiuliza ndivyo nashindwa kuamini. Yeah, I would advise you and I also advise myself that I should not continue to ask myself. Ambia mwenzako usijiulize sana. Don't ask yourself too much. Tell your neighbor. Chunguza maandiko. Search the scripture. Na uamini maandiko. And believe the scripture. Chunguza maandiko na uamini maandiko. Search the scriptures and believe in the scriptures. Maana Mungu ni yule yule. Because God is the same. Jana, yesterday, leo, today, na hata milele. And forever. Yeye habadiliki. 
He never changed. Hakika inawezekana una mateso ambao hauwezi hata kumuelezea mwanadamu. Surely it is possible that you are going through sufferings which you will never ever be able to explain to someone else. Navosema mateso siseme tu njaa, siseme tu ugonjwa, siseme tu kupungukiwa na hela. Kuna mateso mengine ambayo ni utumwa, hauelewi kwa nini uko katika hali kama hiyo. When I'm talking about suffering I just don't mean uh, hunger or maybe lack of finances there are some kind of sufferings that um, are bondage they are slavery and you are in that sl- slavery for a long time Ume 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 umetiwa katika hali fulani ya utumwa ambao ni kama unaelewa kabisa sina uwezo wa kutoka katika hali si ipendi lakini najikuta katika utumwa na mateso kama hayo yeah, you are in a situation which is like a bondage a slavery a situation that you really don't like but you find yourself that you are in that bondage and you are trying to find the way out but you don't know how are you going to come out of that bondage na matokeo ya hiyo hali nakutia katika mateso ambayo hayana ma- maneno ya kuyaeleza And as a result of that situation then it puts you in a in a in a, in a kind of suffering that you have no words to fully describe it. Uko katika hali ambayo unaweza kusema angalau ningekosa hata chakula, angalau ningepata ningekutana na shida hii na hii, lakini hii hali nao ipitia ni mbaya, ni mateso, ni utumwa ambao Mungu mwenyewe aniokoe na hayo. Maybe you'd say maybe if I was in a situation whereby I have no food or maybe I have I don't have this and that but what you're going through it is something that it's so so deep and it's something that you know that it's only god who can take you out of it nana nanielewa who understands what i'm talking about usiku unalia during the night you are crying unaweza usilie kwa machozi you might not cry with a physical tears lakini una stress but you have a lot of stress una depression you are depressed una majina ambao madaktari wanaeleza wanajaribu kuyaeleza maana unasononeka sana huko ndani kwa ajili ya hali unayoipitia you have names which doctors are trying to explain because you are deeply wounded within yourself and you're so so depressed labda umeumizwa maybe you have been hurt labda umekuta uko katika hali fulani kama hiyo or maybe you find yourself in a situation like that sasa hiyo hali inakuletea magonjwa sasa zingine unashindwa kulala lazima umeze vidonge unashindwa kusinzia kwa hali ya kawaida lakini mtu alilala njaa anasinzia vizuri tu hana shida usingizi and so as a result you, 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 you have that situation maybe you've been hurt and as a result of that you cannot sleep without taking medicine but someone who doesn't have food to eat that person can sleep without even taking a medicine but for you it is so so difficult for you to even uh, sleep without taking a medicine hii dunia ni ajabu sana this world is wonderful ona picha ya mtu ambaye amelala kwenye nyumba nzuri labda ya ghorofa ama nyumba nzuri look at a picture of a person who sleeps in a beautiful house maybe it's a one story house ana gari That person has a car. Ametoka kazini. And uh, he comes from work. Askari amemfungulia mlango. Uh, he, the, the security opens the gate for him. Askari ana, anasema moyoni, hivi Mungu mimi nimefanya nini? Niwe tu mlinzi wa kufungua mlango kwa wengine, wa kutembea na mguu wakati wengine wanatembea na gari. Huyo mwingine ameingia vup. Ameingia nyumbani meza imeandaliwa amekula lakini nenda kulala nakosa usingizi. Ana mateso ambao sio njaa, sio kiu sio kulipa nyumba 